Hi guys, Umbuhay! Welcome back to our channel. This is Efraim, your Hardinerong Kapitbahay. It's another day and another plan to discuss anong pang hinihintay mo. Tara, samahan mo ako at magkwentuhan tayo. Hi guys, Umbuhay! Welcome back to our channel. This is Efraim, your Hardinerong Kapitbahay. Magandang araw mga kapuso, kapatid, kapamilya at syempre mga kapitbahay. Um, uh, today we're going to have another... Uh, featured plants and this plant is actually one of my favorite. These are the codex or codiciform na mga halaman. Okay? Um, well, marami akong paborito pero this one is quite uh, um, important sa akin. Siyempre, it's something that is actually special kasi these are one of my first purchase of mga codex plants kasi they have a very beautiful and nice uh, trunk or yung natawag dati mga stems. Okay? So I'm going to show you now my, one of my favorite. This is actually my uh, Pirmiana colorata. Okay, this is also known as the colored sterculia, uh, sterculia, iwil iwil, Indian almond, uh, popeye, kaushi, uh, and this one is actually an origin of India. Makikita siya sa India, Thailand, and Southeast Asia, and of course in Malay Peninsula. Okay, so dun siya usually nakikita or ma 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 makukuha kumbaga. So, uh, the Permiana colorata, as you can see, is a small, medium deciduous tree that tends to be a little slim by age. So, ito kasi, itong aking hinahawakan na to, it's actually very ano, hindi naman siya ganoon katanda pa. So, medyo ano pa siya bata pa kumbaga. So, uh, it may grow up to 15 meters high, pero uh, a young or a small uh, Permiana colorata Ganito lang talaga yung kanyang itsura. At usually, um, nagpo-form siya nung ating natawag na, mabi, na, ma, na matabang trunk or big trunk, kumbaga. Okay? So, the trunk actually is actually straight upward. And sometimes, meron siyang mga ridges o yung mga, uh, mga, mga tinatawag natin. Hindi siya smooth actually. Okay? Um, they have actually a compact crown. Ibig sabihin, yung mga, yung mga dahon niya is actually nakakonsentrate sa pinakataas na part ng ating uh, colorata, okay, ng ating Permiana colorata. And as you can see, the 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 color of the trunk ay um, ash color and yung ating mga young shoots katulad na nakikita natin dito, uh, meron siya mga, actually na, wala na ngayon, ano eh, may, may, may pagka colored, uh, colored gray or colored na uh, may pagka purple kumbaga. So as you can see, uh, nag, nagka crowd yung ating mga dahon dito sa pinaka upper portion ng ating uh, colorata okay and um, as it go higher or as it, as it grows pag, pag nakatanim siya sa sa lupa the tendency of this particular plant ay mag-extend siya na mag-extend okay so magiging straight na lang siya okay or upward yung position ng kanyang pinaka major stem kaya yung ginagawa ng iba um, they try to maintain this particular size na maliit lang talaga siya kasi ka, kaya ka parang nagiging uh, parang bonsai plant na ngayon siya. Okay? So, this is actually an ideal uh, part or ideal kind of plant na pwede natin gawing parang bonsai. Okay? So, uh, this plant, syempre, uh, as you can see, ito yung maliit na version ng kanyang dahon. And parang similar siya doon sa Canadian leaf. Okay? Yung parang five fingers na palmate, kumbaga. So, mal medyo malaki. Okay? And, of course, um, it has a flower. It, uh, ang kulay ng flower nito ay red-orange and of course, uh, yung red-orange yun medyo tubular kung baga yung kanyang uh, flowers and no um, no petals kung baga so parang hubad na hubad yung pinaka pinaka flowers niya and the blooming season for this particular plant starts on March so katulad ngayon, up to May but I don't think this particular plant or this particular Permiana colorata will have its bloom kasi wala pa ako nakikita any indication na siya ay magbubulaklak okay so the fruits syempre kung may bulaklak meron syempre fruits okay so in this case um para siyang ano para siyang dahon yung kanyang pinaka fruits kumbaga uh, the seeds are actually wrinkled um yellow or sometimes makikita kayo smooth uh, na yellow so approximately 1 cm long maliit lang okay and of course, syempre, during the time of pollination. So, ganun na nangyayari sa ating Permania, Permania colorata. Now, let's look into how or the, the care tips for this particular plant. Okay, so, this plant, ang maganda sa plant na to ay 
Um, usually, ang plant na to ay nabubuhay lamang dun sa mga areas na medyo mataas in health altitude, kung bagay sa matataas na lugar. And uh, usually, tumutubo ito dun sa mga cal uh, calcium-rich uh, environment, yung may maraming calcite, kung baga. So, definitely, kung siya ay nasa mga batuhan, ang tendency ng ating plant ay hindi niya kailangan ng masyadong watery. Okay? And um, we, we are going to have this particular plant, may siguro moderate watering lang ang pwede natin ilagay dito sa ating codex na to. Kasi nga, since na yung kanyang trunk ay medyo globus or medyo makapal na or medyo bilog na, ibig sabihin lang nun, mayroong water doon sa pinaka sa ating pinaka pinaka stems kung baga okay may reserve kung baga so the mixture as you can see uh, i use here medyo a decorative type of, of soil okay um, but uh, the the in beneath this particular uh, decorative soil or or decorative uh, sand uh, i use here um, mixtures of uh, three parts uh, ng ng konting uh, coco choir or peat moss Tapos meron siyang konting perlite and meron siyang konting vermiculite and medyo malang marami-rami yung uh, pumice rocks kumaga o pumice na kasing laki ng, ng, ng mata ng hito, yung tinatawag ng matang hito. Ganun lang kalilit yung mga pumice rocks na ginamit ko. And of course, the decorative sand na ginamit ko dito, as you can see, uh, is actually uh, yung kinagamit natin para sa mga aquarium sand. Okay, yung aquarium sand. Yun yung ginagamit, ginamit ko dito para maging maganda yung yung as yung 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 scenery o yung pinaka impact ng ating plants. Okay? So yun, so you could have that one. So highly drained, highly well drained soil ang ginaang kailangan natin gawin for this particular uh, uh, permiata colorata. So kailangan mabilis mag mag, mag uh, bumaba yung water kung baga. Okay? So that else, a uh, light um, since na ito ay um, syempre na, nabubuhay siya sa isang uh, environment na medyo uh, exposed kumbaga, or less yung amount ng light, siguro we can consider this one, yung morning light. Um, syempre, uh, yung, yung sunlight kasi as much as possible indirectly yung tama nung araw dito sa ating um, uh, codiciform. So, the sunlight, will, with the sunlight will definitely activate yung pag-grow ng roots as well as yung pag, uh, pagkakaroon ng maraming dahon. Now, as you can see, medyo yung aking dahon dito, yung mga dahon dito ng, ng, ng Permian, Permania uh, Colorata ay konti lang kasi uh, nagkaroon siya, naglagas siya, kung baga, nat nawala yung mga old leaves pero usually lumalaki talaga yung mga dahon. And I think this one is a perfect naman yung kanyang mga dahon. So perfect naman yung kanyang mga dahon. Kaya I really love um, this particular plant kasi uh, it can maintain yung ganito kaliit na dahon. Okay? Um, so, having more light, so pag, pag, pag lagi nato siya in-expose sa mas ma, mas, ma, mas maaraw na condition, mas malaki syempre yung dahon. Okay? At mas marami. Okay? Yun yung nangyayari usually. So, pero kung lesser lang natin yung amount ng light or early light or, uh, or morning light lamang, siguro mas makikita natin yung aesthetic part ng ating uh, colorata, permiana. Okay? So, as you can see, may mga iba't ibang klase ng codiciforms, ha? Uh, this one kasi is medyo globus lang siya doon sa center, pero makakita kayo ng, ng iba't ibang mga, mga, mga kind or design ng ating uh, colorata. Okay? Maraming ganun. So really, napaganda pag nakakita kayo. Okay? Uh, kasi it's quite unique from everybody. Okay? From all the type of Pirmania colorata. Walang the same. So propagation, you could, we could propagate this one by stem cuttings. And syempre, pwede rin siyang gamitin for leaves, or for, sorry, for seeds pala. Seeds and stem cuttings is the one na pwede natin gamitin for propagation for this plant. Temperature, uh, well, the temperature will range siguro mga 70 to 80s, uh, 7, uh, degree Fahrenheit. So, I really don't know, uh, siguro, siguro mga nasa 20, uh, 25 or 20 to 20 to 27 to 30, yun yung kanyang pinaka pinaka uh, temperature na pwede natin ilagay dito sa ating plants na ito. Okay? Uh, it becomes stress. So, pwede mangyari nun once it is actually exposed to an extreme and intense sunlight. Kasi lalo na ngayon, uh, medyo iba yung conditions ng ating, ng ating environment. So, medyo harsh yung, yung sunlight, yung, yung, yung radiation. So, ang iba, ang ginagawa nila doon sa mga nag-aalaga nito talaga, nilalagyan nila ng UV plastic yung pinaka pinaka uh, 
yung pinaka nilalagyan nitong ating codiciform. So, yun. Para hindi siya talaga masunog. Okay? So, um, this plant really wants uh, siguro yung ganong klase ng environment. In terms of the humidity, um, yung 70 to 80. I mean, 70 to 80, medyo mataas ng humidity. Uh, 55 degree Fahrenheit yung temperature na requirements uh, as much as possible. Or, pero hindi na siya bababa doon sa ganong klase ng temperature. Okay? Now, uh, diseases. So, what are those diseases that can, that, can, that can manifest and affect the growth of this particular codex? So, of course, we have the mealybugs. Okay? And, of course, it is also um, triggered by uh, overwatering. Pwede mag, ma, mabulok yung, yung ating ugat pag ito ay maraming maraming water. So, as much as possible, pag kayo ay magtatanim or mag, magdidilig, na natin na kung talaga bang uh, dry na dry na yung ating uh, ating soil mix. Tapos saka natin siya lagyan ng panibagong tubig. Okay? Uh, what else? Uh, maintenance? Well, hindi naman siya kailangan lagyan natin or i-maintain usually. Uh, usually kasi ang nangyayari dito ay uh, the leaves, pag malaki na siya at matanda na yung leaves, talagang nagtatanggal siya or, or nawawala talaga siya. So if you want to repot, yung ating uh, codiciforms, kailangan root-bound. Ibig sabihin lang yung pinaka-ugat niya, nakaha, naka, nakayakap na doon sa pinaka-soil. Okay? Pago natin siya i-transfer sa panibagong uh, pot niya. Okay? And of course, this can be repot once every two or three years lamang. So, yun ang maganda dito. Hindi masyadong mataas ang maintenance. Kung baga. Okay. So, uh, legginess, of course, it will come leggy or medyo uh, mayroong tinatawag na etulations. Pag kulang siya sa sunlight. Okay? Now, in terms of the toxicity, wala namang alam kung ano yung kung toxic ba talaga to sa humans uh, or pets. Pero, to be sure, uh, wag, nyo nang, wag nyo na ipakain, kung baga. Or, medyo ilayo-layo na natin sa mga sa mga alaga natin mga pets as well as do sa ating mga, mga maliliit na bata. Um, pero, in some other parts of Southeast Asia, ginagawa nila dito, yung mga young leaves na katulad nito, ginagamit nila bilang uh, pinapakain nila sa mga livestock nila. Yun. So, pero again, to become safe, huwag na natin pagalaw yung pinaka pinakadahon niya. Okay? Para hindi na siya masyadong o para hindi ta, para sure tayo na talagang wala. Okay? And of course, remember that this particular codiciforms ay inalagaan because of the codex itself as well as dun sa kanyang unique shapes ng kanyang leaves. Okay? So I think that's all folks. You're watching Planting with Depp and Grace. Please watch and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And thank you, thank you very much for all those people na continuously supporting us with this particular endeavor. At syempre, um, we are working hard para mabigyan kayo ng napaka uh, ganda at napaka uh, expose kayo kumbaga, sa iba't iba mga klase ng halaman na pwede namin ipakita sa inyo. And of course, you may add to your FB list our FB page si Maria Gracia at Lihim na Hardin. Okay, see you again next time. Thank you very much and goodbye.